Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new Petty Wise podcast from Lee Enterprises. I'm your host, Terry Barr. All right, if you've been uh, listening to the news in probably the last couple of days or week, you you are probably well aware that uh, the first federal interest rate increase happened. Um, that, that would be the case in, say, three years that it has not gone up. So the question now is, what does this mean for you? And we are so happy to have joining us today, Chanel Bassett. Uh, she is a finance expert with Nerd Wallet, and she's going to be able to take us through this whole topic. Thanks, Chanel. Thanks, Terry. Happy to be here. Oh, I'm so glad you are too. Okay, let's start with probably one of the easiest questions to get everybody up to speed. What is the federal funds rate? How do you explain it? So the federal funds rate is a rate that is determined at the highest level of banking, the Fed. And the Fed sets the rate to help kind of either move the economy uh, into a more uh, spending friendly zone or into a zone where people can kind of restrict their spending more. And they set the federal funds rate to determine the rate at which banks can borrow and lend money to each other. So the most immediate impact of increasing the Fed's rate um, means that banks are going to, uh, it's going to cost more to, to borrow money. Okay. And uh, that tends to have a cascading effect right onto consumers as banks start to uh, change the interest rates at which they offer mortgages, personal loans, car loans, things like that. Um, so bar- borrowing becomes more expensive, not only for banks, but also for consumers. And um, on the flip side of that, we also see banks start to offer higher interest rates on uh, deposit accounts, um, primarily savings accounts, but sometimes certificates of deposit or checking as well. So interesting. There's always a good and a bad, it seems. Yes. <laughs> okay, let me ask you, why this timing? Why is the rate going up right now? So there has been a lot of inflation happening over the past well, it's kind of been steadily increasing for a while, but, um, you know, especially with things happening in the geopolitical, uh, era, you know, realm, consumers are maybe a little bit, um, a bit, bit more anxious with their money, um, maybe spending a little bit more, uh, they're, you know, also kind of coming out of all the COVID restrictions and the economy is just taking off more in certain ways. Um, so basically inflation has been going up and inflation simply just means that the value of your dollar is going down. You're having less spending power. Um, you know, the amount of groceries you could buy for hundred dollars last year is probably going to cost you closer to $105, uh, you know, for the same number of items this year. Um, so with that increasing, it can, you know, be this kind of scary effect on the economy where, um, you know, people's money just isn't worth as much. So by increasing the federal funds rate, it kind of helps slow inflation. Okay. Okay. So um, I think it's up about one quarter of a percentage point. And, and, you know, I guess in the scheme of things, when you say one quarter of a percentage point, that doesn't seem like a lot, but um, Mm -hmm. it's still going to have some kind of an impact. Yes, absolutely. Um, So when you're talking about an economy of such scale, like a whole country's GDP, um, you know, a quarter of a percent is going to be billions, if not trillions of dollars. It's, um, you know, it's a, it's a huge amount of money, even with just tiny percent. I mean, if you think about it on your individual scale, like say the mortgage on your home was going to go up a quarter of a percent, Mm. um, you know, it's, uh, it's not nothing like you're paying, um, a a lot more every month on, on that interest rate. So, um, so it might seem like a little, but it's actually going to have a pretty big effect. <laughs> uh, wow. Okay. Um, so we talked a little bit about what this could mean for borrowers. You know, when, when you are talking about this, how hard hit will borrowers be with this uh, increase? It's um, hard to say immediately because it okay. seems that like banks are still reacting to the change in the, fu- in the um, federal funds rate going up. So it's probably going to take a little bit of time for banks to change their interest rates, notify their consumers, um, you know, start offering mortgages or loans at this new rate. Um, but yeah, it's uh, going gonna, to gonna take a second for that to, to really kick in and for us to know what the new rates are, are going to be across different banks, because every bank is also going to be different. Okay. Yeah. No kidding. So shop around, I guess, if you're looking and hopefully um, if you're ready to borrow right now, maybe you're still getting that older interest rate. Um, savers. You, you mentioned that this is some better news if you are trying to save. Tell me about that. Yes. Um, so basically since the start of the pandemic, uh, banks started reeling back 
how much interest they were offering on savings and checking accounts and certificates of deposit. Uh, interest rates, you know, from, from our perspective at NerdWallet, we track this kind of stuff every month. We do uh, a roundup refresh every month to see the best rates. Um, so we're very close to the, the pulse of what banks are offering. But uh, yeah, over the past two years, it's been tough. There's um, been lower rates offered on, on products. Some, some accounts that were just launched with high rates suddenly uh, dropped significantly. Um, so it's been uh, kind of a relief actually in the past few months. It seems as the economy is getting kind of back on track as COVID has been, uh, you know, scaling down, um, you know, interest rates have started going up, but we, we predict, you know, looking into our crystal balls, if that's possible, <laughs> we predict that over the next couple of months, we're going to see a lot more competitive interest rates offered on these deposit accounts. Oh, savings accounts. Yay. <laughs> um, how can you find maybe what might be the best one for you, especially if you don't have one right now and now you're going to start looking because the interest rate is increasing. What do you suggest? Definitely comparison shopping. It's really easy to kind of stick with your bank for the long run. Uh, maybe you've developed a good relationship with your bank and, you know, that's not something to snub your nose at. But at the same time, if you're just kind of, you know, okay with your mediocre bank and, you know, you start realizing that there are better interest rates out there. Um, then yeah, shopping around is going to be uh, tremendously helpful because the national average savings rate, um, according to the FDIC is 0.06%, um, <laughs> which is, which is minuscule and, uh, definitely, uh, not up to par against the rate of inflation. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you do start looking into interest rates, um, I would recommend searching for high yield or high interest accounts in Google. Um, you know, little plug for nerd wallet. We do have a lot <laughs> of uh, research on this stuff. But, um, but even besides that, even if you just want to do your own independent research, there's a lot, um, a lot to look at out there. And, um, you know, you might end up finding something that's even closer to 1% or kind of the highest rates we see right now are up as close as 3%, oh, um, which wow. is really <laughs> outstanding compared to what we've seen in the last few years. No kidding. Oh my gosh. Um, I, I guess I, I will we'll look in that crystal ball again, because, um, <laughs> I'm really curious, do you think that the rate could increase again? Oh, um, you know, I, I am not an expert on the federal, federal uh, funds rate, but I would say that um, I, I would imagine the Fed will probably take a, take a beat and just kind of see how this first rate does, a rate sure. increase does, maybe um, evaluate on whether inflation is slowing or not. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not out of the question. It's happened... Um, you know, it, it's been a few years and who's to say if it won't happen again in the near future. Right, right. So why should we continue to pay attention? Um, <laughs> we, we've covered a lot of territory here, but why continue to pay attention to what might happen with the rate? Well, even if you're not planning to buy a house or a car or, you know, invest in a remodel or something like that, where you would need uh, financing in the form of a loan or a mortgage, um, even if you're not doing any of that, even if you're all set where you are, uh, inflation comes from, for all of us. Like we all spend money. Uh, we all are getting lower value than we have in the past, um, for our dollars. So it's important to know how to hedge against that and try to, you know, not only, um, optimize our interest rates that we're receiving for our deposit accounts, but also just saving in general, no matter what the economy is doing is incredibly important. And you want to, um, make sure your money is working for you as best as possible. That sounds like a pretty great bottom line right there. Anything else to add to it? Um, just that saving is, uh, like I said, important no matter what. And um, we don't know what the future holds. Uh, we hope, you know, knock on wood, no more pandemics, hopefully no uh, World War III. But all that being said, um, saving is still incredibly important no matter what's happening outside of, um, outside of your home. So, uh, you know, just, just do your research, um, look for the best interest rates and uh, yeah, keep that emergency fund strong. <laughs> Excellent. Oh my gosh. Thank you for walking us through all of this. Um, it, it's really great information, Chanel. Thank you. Yes, my pleasure. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. And again, Chanel Bassett, uh, finance expert with Nerd Wallet. And <laughs> if you like this podcast, you want to listen to any of our other podcasts, you can find those wherever you enjoy listening to your podcasts. Thanks again. This is a new Pennywise podcast, and I'm Terry Barr. <laughs>